I took one computer science class in college. No idea what the professor was talking about. None. Then moving forward, after about a year of working in Unity, pile of crap. I didn't know it was a pile of crap at the time. That was really the start of the journey from full-time teacher to full-time Unity developer. Is this just another recruiter? And I definitely was getting discouraged. And, and then I get this new email. It feels pretty darn good to have that contract in hand. Before we get too far into this video, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Nova UI. Nova is a new kind of UI framework made for Unity developers, designers, and creators. Nova brings modern UI tools and features directly to the transform and prefab workflow you use every day in Unity. For me, the ease of use in creating adaptive layouts or adding visual polish with drop shadows, borders, and gradients all within Unity won me over almost immediately. Nova has joined the selective and short list of assets that I want with me in every project that I start. Nova also has a flexible data binding system, so now adding dynamic lists and grids to your UI only takes a few lines of code. Build your UI better, faster, and easier than ever before with Nova. You can try every Nova feature in the Unity editor for free, so check it out in the Unity Asset Store or use the link in the description below and see if Nova meets a need for your Unity project. So some of you may know that the original intent of this channel, other than being a place to post a trailer for my very first game, uh, was to create and post videos to support my real world students. I'd been a full-time classroom teacher for I think 17 years, and one of those classes was a game development class. That's where this channel came from. But this year, recently, about seven months ago, I made the transition from being a full-time classroom teacher to being a full-time Unity developer, and I thought, hey, let's make a video, let's tell that story, I'll share my journey, and maybe there's something interesting, maybe there's something useful for you. So I know there's a lot of folks out there who would be excited to make the transition from whatever they're doing now to being a full-time Unity developer or a game developer. And while I want to share my story, I'm not necessarily here to give you advice of how to do it, I'm just here to tell you how I did it. And where that starts was nine and a half, maybe ten years ago, I was getting ready to leave a job uh, at a school in Bulgaria. Beautiful country, loved the country, loved being there, but the job just wasn't a good fit for me. And I was transitioning back to a position in Colorado at a school that I really loved. But as I was making that transition, I knew that I knew that the time that I had left in the classroom of being an energetic, engaged teacher was going to be was was fairly limited. I was starting to feel that fatigue. And so as I was leaving this job in Bulgaria, I started to think about, okay, what's the next, what's the next career? What's my next path? And I found a blog post about learning to code by using Unity. I thought, okay, I've always kind of been interested in programming, but never really taken that step. So I bookmarked that uh, blog post, packed up my apartment. My wife and I moved back to Colorado, started our new job. And once I'd settled in a little bit, I opened up that blog post again and thought, hey, let's go take a look at what Unity is. Now, as a little bit of context, I took one computer science class in college. That's it. And I hated that class. Now, I actually have two degrees in physics, but only that one class in computer science. And it was a class on C, not C++, just good old C. And I remember I was sick one day and I missed the day on pointers. And I came back to class the next day and I had no idea what the professor was talking about. None. And it was just, it was just hideously boring. I was in a lecture hall with 250, 300 other students. It wasn't great. So I calculated how many points I needed to pass that class, took it pass fail and passed by about three points for the semester. That was my college experience with computer science. So with that being my background, now opening up this blog post about Unity, who knows what was going to happen. But for like so many of us, we open up Unity or some other game engine and you're able to create a world. I created a hideously ugly 3D terrain using Unity's just built-in tools. I probably dropped in a third person or first person controller from the standard assets. And I was absolutely in love with what I was able to create. And that started, that was really the start of the journey from full-time teacher to full-time Unity developer. And so like so many of us, I jumped on YouTube. I started looking for videos of how to do things, right? And like, again, like so many of us, I wanted to create this big open world and RPG and blah, 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 blah. And th th those dreams quickly got curtailed by reality. But I remember watching a lot of different videos being like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. But I kind of got stuck. Uh, I could, I could build, you know, an inventory system or I could build this or I could build that, but I couldn't really build a cohesive project. I couldn't get something to come together. And I also remember, you know, this time kind of exploring different programming languages or tools, whether that was 
Unity script or Playmaker, and I eventually settled on C Sharp. I decided, hey, if I really want to do this, I'm going to need to learn C Sharp. This is where Unity's going. I need to learn this. And that was a hard, that was a difficult transition because all of a sudden what I could do quickly in Playmaker was now taking me quite a bit longer to do in C Sharp. I was having to look more stuff up. It wasn't as intuitive, but nonetheless, I kept making progress. And so a very important moment happened at some point. And I, I still really, re I remember sitting at my desk. It's actually the same desk that I'm sitting at now and looking at Amazon being like, oh, there's a book. There's a book that talks about programming C-sharp programming in Unity, but it's, you know, it's $35, $40. Do I really want to do that? All this stuff on YouTube's free. All this other stuff is free. I, I, can I really spend money? This is just kind of like, I'm just exploring here. I remember thinking about that for a few weeks and that decision, that decision to spend money was a huge pivotal point because that book opened the door for C-sharp and Unity in general. And I, and I just continued to buy books. If you look back here, down there somewhere, you can see some of the books that I have, and there's other topics of books there, but about half of what's behind me are Unity and game design books. And that was a huge transition so that all of a sudden I had a, a constant voice explaining C Sharp all the way from the beginning to kind of an intermediate level. It was a fantastic transition. Then moving forward, after about a year of working in Unity, I, even like the rest of us, had been opening a new project every couple of days or every week and dreaming of this and dreaming of that. And, I started to realize that one of these projects I was coming back to over and over again, it was starting to stick. I really liked the idea that was behind this project. And I spent about two years building that project up. And that was my first game. It's a heaping pile of crap, um, but it's published. It's on Steam. And that was in itself a huge moment and a huge confidence boost. Yeah, I have this pile of crap. I didn't know it was a pile of crap at the time. This pile of crap of of code that, that's just spaghetti all over the place. But I've got this published game and people are enjoying and playing that game. It's a huge step forward in confidence. I then, uh, with that confidence and, and with some skills and some knowledge, I convinced the school that I was working at to let me teach a game design course. And that, that took some time to convince them that game design was a legitimate field and a legitimate way to get students into computer science. And then at some point I did a couple game jams and the second one, it was fine. I had fun. I made my first 2D game and a viewer challenged me to turn that game into a published game, put it up on Steam and document that process. I, I did to some extent and that became my second game. It became Grub Gauntlet, which is a game that sold horrifically poorly, horrifically poorly, but was engineered and had architecture that I was proud of and and worked well, as opposed to that just pile of spaghetti code that Fracture the Flag was my first game, which actually sold reasonably well. I was very proud of what I was able to produce. That event, accomplishment of publishing that second game, really uh, for me was that final step in saying, hey, I think I have the skills to become a full-time Unity developer. So after making that decision to quit my teaching job, I had that timer was ticking. June 15th was the day that I lost my housing. I lost my food. I lost my utilities. But this is happening in early March. And when it's early March, you can't really apply for jobs that you're going to start in June or July. And nonetheless, I start working on my resume and cover letter. And I'll try to remember to put a link to it uh, in the description down below. Jason Weinman's got a fantastic uh, live stream. It's recorded now. It's up on his YouTube channel of uh, him and three other industry professionals looking at cover letters and resumes. And I watched that thing, the whole thing, two or three times, rewound, zoomed in on resumes, opened up the resumes if there were links, and really studied what was going on to build up my resume, my cover letter, and actually a, a web page on my, on my site. And I started to put that out there. I started to put my resume, I started to put my cover letter out there. I was looking for positions online. I was looking for a remote position. Everybody's asking for senior developers, right? Senior developer, senior developer, senior developer. It's, it's almost, it's, it's kind of meme worthy, right? And nobody's asking for junior developers. So I'm reading these descriptions carefully and looking at this senior developer. I'm like, well, can I do that job or can I not do that job? And a fair number of the senior developer positions simply was not qualified for, really was not qualified for. 
And some of them, I was like, yeah, hey, I can, I know what, I know how to do 70, 80% of that. I bet you it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to do most or all of that job. And so I would apply for those. And occasionally I would get some, uh, an email back and there'd be some clarification and then radio silence. And it almost became a joke with my wife and I like, well, how many jobs did you apply for today? How many jobs did you hear back from? And honestly, I was applying for five, six, seven, eight jobs a, a week. I was applying for every job that I thought I would enjoy and it was a reasonable fit. I turned down a ton of her. I ignored a ton of emails that had to do with Web 3.0 and NFTs and no interest in that. And as that June 15th deadline is getting closer and closer, but I'm still realistically too far away to really get a job, the stress is building a little bit. And week after week goes by. And then I get this new email. And it's, you know, talking to me about cranes and simulations. And I'm like, is this just another recruiter who's just like mass, mass emailing everybody? And, you know, as, as you do with these emails, I went back and read it a second and a third time. I was like, wait, you know, these guys really might actually know who I am. I, 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 they've watched some of my videos. They have some idea of who I am. They know I have a physics degree. Okay, well, let's do some research into the company. Turns out they're a legitimate company. Got on, got on my interview uh, with my soon-to-be uh, new supervisor, and we chatted for an hour. Seemed like a really good fit. I was blown away, blown away that that opportunity just came and landed in my lap like that. And again, I feel very lucky and privileged that that happened. So fast forward a couple of weeks from that first interview, I've talked to a couple other people in the company, and I have a contract in hand. And I got to tell you, that was a moment I, I, I was pretty sure it could happen, but you never know until it does. And I got to tell you, it feels pretty darn good to have that contract in hand. And if I look back at that longer process, if I look back at how I got here, and again, I don't want to make this video about giving advice because we all take different journeys. We all take different paths. But I have to acknowledge the fact that that, that patience and the time uh, taken to develop those skills and the knowledge while I was doing something else. I didn't, I didn't just quit my job. I didn't mortgage my house. I didn't just sit down and build my own game and put it out there and hope it was good. And then when it wasn't, try to get another job. It's not a good avenue. But that time, nine years, nine and a half years now, I think, of working in Unity, of learning C Sharp, publishing games, doing game jams, and making YouTube videos, you guys may not know how much I learn with almost every video that I make. Almost every video that I make on this channel, I'm learning something new. Whether it's the topic of the video or some small subset of that video, I'm learning something. And by putting that out there, by building that resume, by building that portfolio of work, that's how I was able to make this transition, both in the skills and the knowledge that I gained, but also by pushing myself out there and, and being more public and, and having something to show for potential employees. I feel incredibly lucky, and I do, again, want to acknowledge the privilege of being able to make this jump, both in terms of where I was, where I am, and a company that was willing to take a risk and let me become a Unity developer. So at the end of the day, I hope that was interesting, and better yet, maybe useful for you in your journey, and maybe from where you are now to where you want to go. All right, let's see if we can make this not suck.